Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good morning and welcome to Inside Texas Politics. I'm Marie Saavedra in today for Jason Whiteley. Let's start this Sunday with U.S. Representative Colin Allred. He is in studio to talk about the bipartisan resolution that he passed and did this during a partisan government shutdown. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Marie. Happy to be here. Good. So we'll start with that resolution. This gives the House power to intervene uh, in the courts to defend the Affordable Care Act yes. against lawsuits, including the lawsuit challenge from Texas. Why was it important to do this first? Yeah. Well, we filed it on my first day in Congress, um, and it was important because this is the most important issue on the campaign. Mm -hmm. People were worried about their health care, particularly protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. And I told a story on the House floor about one of my constituents, a woman named Natalie, who passed away, unfortunately, not long ago, who uh, came to my events and got involved uh, with our campaign because she was worried about protections I like the ones we're trying to keep in place sure. going away. Sure, and you, it, you've you said that you heard health care was the number one issue yeah. during your run. Yeah. And so what are you hearing from your constituents as far as um, not only wanting to protect pre-existing conditions, but also you've talked about um, providing incentives to expand Medicaid in yeah. certain states. That's right. I, I do think that we want to make sure that any state that wants to expand Medicaid, like Texas, that mm -hmm. hasn't done it, uh, can retroactively get access to all the federal funds that they would have had they done it in the first place. What we're trying to do here is expand coverage and lower costs. We know that we have the highest uninsured rate in the country here in Texas. We can do better than that. And I'm really proud that my resolution passed with bipartisan support. What does that say, especially at a time like this yeah, where it's yeah. so tense? Well, there's some things we agree on. And I think there are some things that um, aren't partisan. And, and protections for people with pre-existing conditions should fall into that, and I'm glad that it did. So you announced this week that you've been selected for the House's Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. This was a campaign issue also for you talking about the needs of North Texas. What do you see um, for your district that could be a real project yeah. uh, that looks possible yeah. uh, with your appointment of this committee? Yeah, well, I think we have to be creative. I think we have to look at many different options because we're growing so rapidly. We're mm -hmm. one of the fastest growing areas in the country and our growth isn't going anywhere. So it's really not optional for us. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested in high-speed rail. Mm -hmm. I want to see the Dallas to Houston project okay. uh, get underway if we can. I want to find ways to expand our roadways here and make them more safe, particularly with 635. Uh, in fact, I've been meeting with officials about how we can do that. Uh, and I want to find creative ways to address our transportation needs. You started your freshman year in Congress in a side of a shutdown. Yeah. Still at this point, 800,000 Americans affected by this, many of them here in North Texas. Yeah. You held an event with some furloughed workers recently. What were they telling you? What yeah. was their level of concern? Yeah. Well, I wanted them to know that we cared and that I don't see this as a partisan game, that I understand this is having real world impacts on people. Uh, and they told me that they were struggling, that they're still working, they're still incurring the costs of working, like childcare, like the gas money and parking when they get to their place of employment, and they're not getting paid. And for most Americans, including federal workers, they can't go more than a month without pay. Uh, there was a single mother there who told me that she was having a hard time looking her children in the eyes because she was having to pick which bill she was going to pay and not pay. Uh, and I wanted her to know that we're working extremely hard to reopen the government. I've voted eight times to reopen the government. I'm trying to find bipartisan coalitions that we can form to try and push for this, and I want to make sure that we can uh, get this done quickly, hopefully. Frankly, it looks pretty nasty right now, this stalemate, yeah. this yeah. impasse. What is it going to take from House leadership, do you think, to really end the shutdown and get people back to work? Yeah, well, I think our position is that we shouldn't shut down the government over a single policy issue, uh, that we should reopen the government. That's why we voted eight times. We've voted actually on Republican spending bills out of the Senate that they passed almost unanimously uh, to just fund the government, let's reopen it, and let's talk about real border security and how we can do that. I think there are smart investments that we can make to do that, but we shouldn't do it uh, in the context of a shutdown. And what I'm trying to find uh, is common ground here. I do think that there uh, are a lot of folks on both sides of the aisle who aren't, who don't disagree that much on what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We're just disagreeing about how to do it. Okay. Hopefully we can get around that. And soon for a lot of people who That's are right. waiting for their paychecks. Very soon, hopefully. Yeah. So you have been a member of Congress for a few weeks now. Yeah. I'm sure the shutdown factors into this, but what has been the biggest surprise for you <laughs> or the biggest challenge? Yeah. Well, I, I think that we, we would like our members of Congress to have time to form uh, friendships, mm -hmm. to form bipartisan uh, relationships. Uh, and the nature of this, uh, as we've set it up, is that you don't have that time. And so I've been trying to carve that out. And I spend as much time as I can on the Republican side of the House, shaking hands, talking about our families, talking about the playoff games that just happened, just trying to break that ice so that people understand that I'm a person, we have a lot in common. Let's see what we can get done together. Okay. 
I want to end with what you would tell uh, a federal worker who might be watching this and yeah. worried that their next paycheck is not yeah. going to come. Yeah, that's right. Well, first of all, I just want to say that we have voted uh, to authorize all the back pay uh, for all of our folks, so making sure that once the government is reopened, they will uh, get their back pay. Um, and also that we're working extremely hard and that there are people in Congress who understand that this is not a game, who are trying to reopen the government, who don't, uh, we're not here to score points, don't think there's anybody winning in this, and uh, no, we're taking it very seriously. Okay, U.S. Representative Colin Allred, thank you for your time this morning. Really thank you for it. having me. Okay.